When was the last time you went to the dentist? Disgusting! You should book an appointment, like yesterday. Anyways, so there's a lot of myths surrounding teeth in the medieval times. In fact, many people think that proper dental hygiene is a fairly modern practice. So let's talk about how people took care of their teeth back then. According to medical reports dating back to the 12th century, most people washed their mouths with a mixture of herbs like rosemary, sage, or honeysuckle. There were even simple exercises like rubbing behind your ears when you washed, as it was normally a daily occurrence to at least wash your face, hands, and other important parts. There are also records stating the use of elecampane as an early toothpaste. Vinegar was another common dental supplement and was mixed with other ingredients like the juice of a plantain, for instance. Nowadays, you may see life hack videos about effective cleaners made from basic household ingredients or common herbs, but back then most people were well aware of what plants you might come across while traveling on the road and how they could be used in a variety of situations. Something rather peculiar, though, was a common misconception about toothaches. You see, it was believed by several doctors that there was something called a tooth worm that could accidentally be swallowed or just make its way into your teeth somehow and cause them to hurt. It seemed that toothaches were quite common back then as they are today, and so there were diverse ways to deal with them. One recipe for fighting oral pain calls for distilled water from red roses mixed with a little beeswax and butter in a heated dish which was then applied to a linen cloth and pressed against the jaw as hot as one could bear. Other methods included balled up herbs that were kept in the mouth between the affected area and the cheek. As you walked and saliva collected, you'd spit it out, replace it, and even sleep with the ball in your mouth to hopefully wake up renewed and painless. While there were herbs like cloves, ivy bark, holly leaves, or special mixtures used in similar ways, it was normal to have the tooth removed if the pain persisted. Now, if you still didn't want to go the surgical route and herbs and medicine weren't doing the trick, you could also try alternative medicine in the form of both magic and prayer. In a collection of Welsh herbal and folklore remedies, there's a rather strange method of dealing with a toothache where an iron nail engraved with the words Agla Sabaoth Athanatos was inserted under the affected tooth then shortly after removed and driven into an oak tree where it would supposedly remove the pain as long as it was there. The process would not be complete, however, without carving the name of the individual into the tree using the aforementioned nail and repeating the phrase, By the power of the Father in these consecrated words, as thou enterest into this wood, so let the pain and disease from the tooth of the sufferer, even so be it. Amen. In case you were wondering about the odd trio of words from before, Agla most likely refers to an acronym for Atag Gibor Leolam Adonai, which in Hebrew means Thou, O Lord, art mighty forever. Assuming I pronounced it right. Athanatos is Greek for immortality, and Sabaoth refers to the armies of the Lord. Pretty intense stuff for a common toothache, but uh, hey, if it works, it works, right? So. Hopefully they uh, got their tetanus shot before sticking that iron nail in their mouth, you know. Dentists, back then, were a jack-of-all-trades, and they were mostly known as barber surgeons, which already tells us the sheer magnitude of operations they had to perform. They cut hair, pulled teeth, removed limbs, and were overall not where you wanted to find yourself on your day off. Don't worry, though. They mainly cared for soldiers instead of common folk, so unless you were recently conscripted into service, I think you're safe. There's more I could talk about concerning barber surgeons, but most of what I know applies to the Victorian era, so I'll maybe cover that in a future upload. Overall, oral cleanliness, as well as fragrant breath, were of daily importance in medieval times, and a common cure for most ailments was to just change your diet. What you eat drastically affects your health, and they understood this quite well in medieval times. Perhaps the most common medicine is the right meal. The series of videos will all be about the medieval period, and I'll be keeping them shorter for a more consistent upload schedule, so let me know in the comments if you like this format for my non-mythology videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed learning about this topic, and I'll see you for Ugh. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed learning about this topic, and I'll see you for more feudal facts very soon.